Okay, so we spoke with Johnny, who is our contact at The Awesome Company. Him and his crew, they looked at it and they said they love the cat. They love the way we cropped out the cat and stuck him in the image, but they're not really feeling it. You're like, huh? And they're like, yeah, you know, I see it. And, you know, I'm just imagining it on a shirt and it's cool. But, you know, I it's just, you know, this is the awesome company. We really want this to represent the awesome company. Oh, OK, no problem. It's cool. All right. Let's go back. So you speak to your designer friends and your designer friends look at it and they're like, it's okay, but I, I kind of see some, uh, let's see here. It, I, I see like a line here that looks like it shouldn't be here. And this, it looks all right, but it's just, it, it doesn't pop. There's not a lot of texture. I don't see a lot of contrast and everything looks kind of like, almost like a white wall is faded over the whole thing. So you're like, I, I think you can do more to add this to make this pop more. So that's what we're going to do in this class. Let's get rid of this border here. I'm going to delete this. So what I was using to create the grunge effect was the default brushes. Now you can create your own brushes or you can load more. So what I did was I went to a site called Brush Easy. Here we go. This is a great place to go to find brushes, Photoshop patterns, textures, just all kinds of stuff. Now, to be honest, I actually don't spend a whole lot of time on third party sites to get resources only because it's very time consuming and I could spend hours and hours and hours just hunting through all this awesome resources. So that's kind of a problem I have, but just to let you know, there's so much information out there when it comes to Photoshop that it, it can be overwhelming and time consuming. So we go here and there's actually some brushes I downloaded and I'm going to show you the link. Okay. These are the brushes that I downloaded. You'll see the link. It should be on your right side under links. And you can see here that they're free spray Photoshop brushes. And basically they're kind of like grunge brushes. So I downloaded them and this is what the files look like. And so on Mac with the latest version of Photoshop, I just double clicked on these and they automatically installed. I don't know if it's going to work like that on a PC, but what you can do, so we're going to click B to select our brush right here. And then here are our brushes. You can just click this little gear icon here and hit load brushes. And there you can go and load your brushes. You just kind of hunt around where they are on your desktop or Windows file folder. So if you scroll all the way down, these are the new brushes we have. Let's start playing with these. Okay, so I'm going to select this one right here. It looks kind of cool. Oh, nothing selected. So we're going to go back here. We're going to create a brand new layer mask. And this is our new brush. And so let's see how it does. Should I scale it up? Actually, yeah, I'm going to zoom out a bit, do my brush, and I'm going to scale it up. Let's see. That looks kind of cool. Hopefully, I can just do this in one stroke. We'll find out. And let's see here. I'm kind of digging this. It's got this nice little splatter effect. So this brush here, now I kind of want to tilt this brush 90 degrees. So what we can do is we can click here. So this circular knob you have here, you can actually use this to rotate the brush. So let's go here and now we can see the brush is rotated. Let's kind of straighten that out a bit. All right, and then we're just going to do the same thing here. I'm going to expand it up a little bit. My computer's slowing down, so bear with me. There we go. Pretty cool. And then we'll go on and repeat this again. It's kind of a neat effect. I'm, I'm digging this, really digging this. All right, let's see here. So clicking multiple times. All right, and so uh, let's see what else we got. Let's uh, play with some of the other brushes. <laughs> okay, we got this kind of giant circle here. What can we do with this? Let's scale this up. Let's see if I can clean up some of the edges, get kind of a better shape. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to, let's see here. Oh, I accidentally did too much. I'm going to go back to my other, the original grunge brush I was using, and I'm going to scale this up, and then I'm going to do the opposite. And I just want to make sure I have the logo. Just going to make sure I include the logo, because I don't want to 
really lose the logo. All right, I'm kind of digging this effect, uh, but I don't want to do it too much. So let's go back to our other brush. Let's try that one. Okay, I'm kind of digging that. It has a lot more texture as you can see. Now, let's see how we can make this pop more. So, what I'm going to do, down here, right here you have what's called adjustment layers. These are pretty cool. You can make tweaks to, I guess you would say, the color, value, and contrast to the image. And it's non-destructive because it's kind of like a new layer that will alter all the other layers underneath it. So what we're going to do is, let's see if we can, let's first thing we do, let's check the levels. So what I can do with the levels now, this is dark and I can make the darkers, the blacks, more black. So that kind of cool, that's kind of cool. And then I'm going to make the lights a little bit brighter. And so that kind of creates a form of contrast and let's see, I'm kind of, playing around with it so the cat does get a little bit lost he kind of gets washed out but that I mean that's that's fine for the effect because uh, you can see the logo and most importantly you can see the cat's eyes uh, which I really want to stand out so let's see I'm kind of going down all right so I'm gonna leave it there now if we had multiple layers underneath you can just affect this one by holding the alt or option key and that will only affect this layer right there so I turn it off, I turn it on. I love this contrast I see around here. It really pops out, kind of gives it a bit more depth. He still looks kind of flat and plain, but let's see what we can do. Actually, no, he does pop out a bit more, so that's good. Okay, so now we're gonna go to, let's try brightness and contrast maybe. So we can up the contrast a little bit. Do we make this brighter or darker? So maybe we'll take it a little bit darker because it is gonna be placed on the dark shirt. So I'm just, just a little bit, okay. And then again, I can do that. So let's try another. Let's do color balance. This is kind of a fun one. What this does is it gives you access to your shadows, midtones, and highlights. So we have our shadows here. And with the shadows, we can either turn them cyan or go in the opposite direction and turn them red. Let's see here, you'll see what I mean. So here we added more cyan and here we added a bit more red. So for the grunge effect, I think I want to go for more of a red, kind of a dark brown kind of color. And then we can either add more green or magenta. And again, this is just kind of altering the color properties for the darker colors. And then we have yellow and blue, which are opposites, complementary colors. Kind of a rustic type of feel to it. All right, so let's try that. Now let's go to our midtones and do the same thing. So I want to go for a more yellow color, but it seems like when I add this blue in it, it adds a bit more contrast. So I'm looking around here, it just pops out more. So here we clicked on highlights. Okay, I'm kind of digging that, that's pretty cool. So let's see what it looked like before. That's what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. So you can see I added a lot more red tones to the darker colors and it made the cat pop out more, which is pretty cool. That's exactly what I wanted. Let's see here. We can go to hues and saturations. And here we can desaturate it. So it's kind of black and white. Or we can add more saturation to it. You can kind of blow it out a bit. Again, this is going to be on a t-shirt. We want this to just look cool, I guess, lack of a better word. No, we want it to pop out, so we really want. I'm debating of whether I should go for kind of like a, a muted rustic type of color, or if I should go more for just kind of eye popping. You know, it's kind of a fun shirt. Let's go for a fun vibe, and this is the awesome company. So we can darken the whole thing to kind of mute it. We can wash that out. I'm just going to keep that at zero. Leave it alone. Now the hue, we can mess with the entire hue. 
So you can see that really changes the look of the image. But I think I'm going to leave it like that. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm happy with that. So all these adjustment layers, if you reorder them, that's going to change the effect because they're all kind of compounding on each other. But I'm kind of digging this. This this actually works out. So we'll put this all in a folder here and you can see it. And let's uh, actually, let's have some fun and turn it all off. And so that's what it originally looked like. You can see it. It kind of looks flat now is all the adjustment layers. So I'm kind of digging that. That's uh, pretty cool. So now one last thing we want to do to add more texture to it and something that people have asked me over and over again is how to create a grunge effect. So we kind of have a grunge border, but now we want this grunge all over. So let's see what we're going to do is I have a collection of textures that I use and these are SVG grunge patterns. So, and you'll see, I'm going to pull this one in, number seven, and you can see here, this is a vector file. So all these little scratches you see are vector objects. What I'm going to do, I'm going to place this over here till I get kind of a cool look that I, I want. Let's see, I don't want to cover up the cat's eyes. So this is cool. Hit return. Okay, so now I'm going to do, I'm going to call this awesome company shirt. I'm going to select this grunge layer right here and hit D to make sure I have black and white right here. Select my awesome company shirt group and then apply the mask to that. Oops. Okay, so I selected the grunge layer and I have all these grunge elements selected. What I want to do is shift command I, it might be shift control I or go to select and inverse. We're going to inverse it. So now what we've done, we've selected everything but the grunge elements and then we're going to select this grouping here and then we're going to create a mask. Hide this layer and that is what our grunge layer looks like. So it's really cool at this point I can take this mask and I can actually kind of flip it around and play with all the little grunge elements that are on there. And then what I want to do, I want to make sure, so I'm going to go back to here, go back to my brush, go to a normal brush at the top. There we go. Let's zoom out and then zoom back in. And what I want to do, oops, I thought I selected the right brush. Maybe I did it. Okay, there we go. So what I want to do, I just want to make sure I have nothing over the eyes. Because I want these eyes to shine. And so that's pretty cool. I think I'm digging this. So you can see. Okay. I'm going to go over the eyes real quick. What I'm doing is I'm just, I'm taking this. There we go. I'm taking my adjustment layers and I'm applying a mask over the eyes. So the eyes, I think that'll do because, yeah, because I, I like his eyes popping out and just in the, he's kind of looks like he's looking at the awesome company. And so that's, that's it. Now what we'll do is let's open up our merch t-shirt template. Don't resolve, it's fine. You just want this. Okay, select that. Is that our t shirt design? That's our layer. Double click on this layer right here. Then we're going to go back to this. We're going to drag this all the way over here. Place it there. There we go. And we got move tools selected, auto select and group. Let's move it to about where we want it. So that looks cool. Save it. Actually, I gotta hide this layer. And it's taking a while to save. That's fine. Save it. It is saved. Go back to our shirt. And that's what it looks like. I want to see this on a black shirt. Just look there. Select here. And asphalt. No, I want to see this in a black shirt. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty cool on a black shirt. 
And then I'm going to select this layer again. Let's take this element, hit the V2 for the move to. I'm holding shift in the down arrow. I just want to move this down a little bit, hit save. And this is where the merch template really comes in handy because you can see placement of the shirt. So maybe we should move it a little bit down. I think that's cool. That'll do. So uh, it does seem a little bit bright. So I don't know. Maybe I'm. Um, you can either print out a copy or maybe I want to mute it so it looks like it fits with the shirt a little bit better. But so far, that's I think that's pretty cool. And then what's what's really nice about this is that we can suppose we want a, a royal blue. We can select royal blue and all the grunge effect because everything has been masked you can see the blue coming through. So there's green. The green's kind of cool. So that's kind of cool. Just want to show you that. So let's see here. And these grunge files right here are available on the site. And so you should see a link again to your right to download the zip file. So that's it.